Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today we're going to react to the 70 major sins in Islam. The worst sins by the merciful servant. From what I learned so far about Islam is that the worst of all sins would be shirk. And shirk is when you associate other gods with God or even partners with God. When you dive into polytheism away from monotheism, that would be the worst of all sins. But even if you look within Christianity, you see, of course, that the first commandment is that you should have no gods beside God. And this is the main sin, the worst of all sins, because once you start associating associating partners or other gods with God, you start making everything else into God. You start deifying other things. You start shifting your priority. And instead of having God as your first priority, you start worshipping money, women, cars and what not. All right, this is a long video. With no further ado, let's have a look. Seventy. The major sins are acts which have been forbidden by Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Allah says in the Quran, If you avoid the major sins which you are forbidden, we will remove from you your lesser sins and admit you to a noble entrance into paradise. So, it is very important for us to learn what these major sins are and avoid them insha'Allah. Number 1. Associating partners with Allah, Shirk. Indeed, Allah does not forgive association with Him but he forgives what is less than that for whom he wills. And he who associates others with Allah has certainly fabricated a tremendous sin. Number 2. Committing murder And those who do not evoke with Allah another deity or kill the soul which Allah has forbidden to be killed, except by right, and do not commit unlawful sexual intercourse. So this again absolutely translates to the Ten Commandments of Christianity. You shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery. It's exactly the same. And whoever should do that will meet a penalty. Number three, practicing black magic. And the people learn what harms them and does not benefit them. But the children of Israel certainly knew that whoever purchased the magic would not have in the hereafter any share. And wretch is that for which they sold themselves, if they only knew. Yes. Number four, Witchcraft. not performing the prayers. But there came after them successors who neglected prayer and pursued desires. So they are going to meet evil. Mm -hmm. Number five. So this would be a question to you guys. I heard oftentimes people struggle for the Fajr prayer, which means getting up before the sun rises. And I can understand how hard that is. And many people don't practice it because it is so hard. My Arabic teacher gave me an analogy. He said that the hardest thing in the world to lift is your sheet in the morning for Fajr prayer. So my question here is, if you do not practice the Fajr prayer, are you still a Muslim? Are you still considered a Muslim? Please let me not. Withholding the zakah, charity, and let not those who greedily withhold what Allah has given them of his bounty ever think that it is better for them. Rather, it is worse for them. Makes sense. Their necks will be encircled by what they withheld on the day of resurrection. Number six. It's very beautifully put because Allah, God, gave you that wealth, He gave you that money, and now you don't want to give that further to any other person, even though it wasn't yours to begin with. Fasting on a day of Ramadan without excuse. Right. Islam is built upon five pillars, testifying that there is no true God except Allah, and that Muhammad is a messenger of Allah, performing the prayers, paying the zakah, making the pilgrimage to the house of Allah, and fasting the month of Ramadan. Number seven not performing Hajj while being able to do so as mentioned in the previous point. Number 8. Disobeying in disrespect to parents. And your Lord has decreed that you not worship except Him and to parents good treatment. Whether one or both of them reach old age while with you, say not to them so much as of, and do not repel them but speak to them a noble word, and lower to them the wing of humility out of mercy and say, my Lord have mercy upon them as they brought me up when I was small. Number 9. 
Absolutely beautiful, yet again translates to Christianity, you shall honor thy parents. Cutting off the ties of relationships. So would you, perhaps, if you turned away, cause corruption on earth and sever your ties of relationship? Those who do so are the ones that Allah has cursed. So he deafened them and blinded their vision. What does that really mean? Please let me know in the comment section. What kind of relationships are we talking about? If I tie the relationship with friends, am I sinful then? Please let me know. Do so are the ones that Allah has cursed. So he deafened them and blinded their vision. Number 10. Committing adultery or fornication. And do not approach unlawful sexual intercourse. Indeed, it is ever an immorality and is evil as a way. Number 11. Committing sodomy. Allah will not look at a person with pleasure who commits sodomy with a man or a woman. Right on. Number 12. Taking or paying interest. Riba. If the world would only stay away from this one sin, this world would be a thousand times better already. Consume interest cannot stand on the day of resurrection except as one who stands who is being beaten by Satan into insanity. That is because they say, Trade is just like interest, but Allah has permitted trade and has forbidden interest. All right. So whoever has received an admonition from his Lord and desists may have what is past, and his affair rests with Allah. But whoever returns to dealing in interest or usury, those are the companions of the fire. They will abide eternally therein. Number 13. Devouring the wealth of orphans. Indeed, oh. Those who devour the property of orphans unjustly are only consuming into their bellies fire. Number 14. Lying about Allah and His Messenger وسلم, And on the day of resurrection, you will see those who lied about Allah with their faces blackened. In hell, a residence for the arrogant. Will we see David Wood Number 15. Running away from the battlefield. And whoever Good. turns his back to them on such a day, Unless swerving as a strategy for war or joining another company has certainly returned with anger upon him from Allah and his refuge is hell and his wretched is the destination. Good. It is of course a strong commandment for men and keeps the character in check. Number 16. The unjust leader. <laughs> nice the picture. cause is only against the one who wronged the people and tyrannized upon the earth without it right. Those will have a painful punishment. Number 17. Pride and Arrogance. Assuredly, Allah knows that they conceal and what they declare. Indeed, He does not like the arrogant. 100%. Yet again, I know I said it a billion times before, but I met so many arrogant Muslims throughout my life. And this is one of the major things that kept me away from Islam for so long, even looking into it, let alone reading the Quran. I was met by arrogance and that arrogance appalled me from the religion. Therefore, yes, absolutely. Arrogance is a sin. With arrogance, we are essentially playing God. We always have to stay humble. Ungratefulness. So remember Same. me. I will remember you and be grateful to me and do not deny me. Beautiful. Number 19. Intoxicants, alcohol and drugs. Exactly right. Or you who have believed. Indeed. And there you saw it. Alcohol and drugs. I know so many Muslims that stay away from alcohol, but they're smoking weed and do all kinds of other drugs. Intoxicants, gambling, sacrificing on stone gambling. and altars to other than Allah. All and of divining it. arrows are but defilements from the work of Satan. So avoid that, you may be successful. Number 20. Gambling. The previous verse mentioned also applies to this sin. Number 21. Slandering innocent women. Indeed, those who falsely accuse chastity, unaware and believing women are cursed in this world and the hereafter, and they will have a great punishment. Number 22. Stealing from exploits of war and from the money of the zakat. It is not attributable to any prophet that he would act unfaithfully in regard to war booty. And whoever betrays, taking unlawfully, will come with what he took on the day of resurrection. Then will every soul be fully compensated for what it earned, and they will not be wronged. Number 23. Consuming forbidden wealth or taking it by any means. And do not consume one another's wealth unjustly or send it in bribery to the rulers in order that they might aid you to consume a portion of the wealth of the people in sin, while you know it is unlawful. 
Number 24. Committing highway robbery. What? Number 25. Making false oath. And they are those who do not testify to falsehood. And when they pass near ill speech, they pass by with dignity. Beautiful. Number 26. Committing oppression. Except those poets who believe and do righteous deeds and remember Allah often and defend the Muslims after they were wronged and those who have wronged are going to know what kind of return they will be returned. Levying illegal taxes. Prophet Sallallahu said, Do you know who the bankrupt is? The bankrupt from my nation is the one who appears on the day of resurrection having performed the prayers, fasted and paid the zakah, but had also abused that person, slandered that person, wrongfully taken the wealth of that person and spilled the blood of that person. These people will take from his good deeds. If his good deeds are thereby exhausted, he will be given their sins and then he will be thrown into the hellfire. It is so obvious, isn't it? I mean, anybody listening to this, we have this innate voice within ourselves and we know right from wrong. I'm really wondering how people commit such atrocities. It is so commonsensical to me listening to this. As I said, plenty of it we find within Christianity as well. It is the simple guidance of right and wrong. And we as humans, we have it in us. Number 28, I don't understand. stealing. As for the thief, the male and the female, amputate their hands in recompense for what they committed right. as a deterrent punishment from Allah. And Allah is exalted in might and wise. But whoever repents after his wrongdoing and reforms, indeed, Allah will turn to him in forgiveness. Indeed, Allah is forgiving and merciful. And this is exactly what the critiques of Islam always point out. Ooh, so bad, you cut off the hand. First and foremost, a person that does not repent, a person that simply steals, is a threat to society. Do you want to live in a society where you constantly have to be afraid of being robbed? It's absolutely repulsive. I've been robbed before in Vietnam, a Christian country, apparently. If there would be a stronger implication of getting your hand cut off, people wouldn't do it. And why why do you even care? Are you a robber? Do you steal? I personally do not. And I want to live in a society where my kids won't get robbed, won't get mugged, won't get shot. If a stronger implication than such a law set keeps people from it, that would be a great thing. Number 29. Suicide. Same and do not kill yourselves or one another. Indeed, Allah is to you ever merciful. And whoever does that and aggression and injustice then we will drive him into a fire. And that, for Allah, is easy. Number 30. The perpetual liar. And invoke the curse of Allah Go. upon the liars. Number 31. Whoever does not judge by what Allah has revealed, then it is those who are the disbelievers. Allah does not accept the prayer of a judge who judges against the laws of Allah. Great, absolutely fantastic. I wish we would have theocracy implied within Western countries as well. And the law sets that are given are given by God and not given by men. Because this is exactly what we have. Man-made laws that serve so much in justice. Number 32. Engaging in bribery. And do not consume one another's wealth unjustly or send it in bribery. To the rulers in order that they might aid bit, yeah. you to consume a portion of the wealth of the people in sin, while you know it is unlawful. Number 33. Women appearing like men and vice versa. Allah's curse is upon oh, women oh, who oh, appear oh. like men and upon men who appear like women. Bigoted. Number 34. Being a pimp. Day youth. Is the one who approves the indecency of his womanfolk and who is void of jealousy or the pimp who facilitates indecency between two people. Wow, I didn't know that, man. Again, most pimps in Germany come from a Muslim background. This is why I didn't know that this was forbidden within the religion. Of course, it makes sense that it is forbidden. Thank God. But nevertheless, I didn't know it. I learned something here. Number 35. Marrying for the purpose of making a woman allowable for another. And if he has divorced her for the third time, then she is not lawful to him afterward until after she marries a husband other than him. And if the latter husband divorces her or dies, there is no blame upon the woman and her former husband for returning to each other if they think that they can keep within the limits of Allah. Yeah, this passage I do not really understand. We had lengthy comments about it in the comment section. So please let me know what this passage truly means. 36. Not keeping clean from the remains of urine and your clothing purify and uncleanliness avoid. 
Prophet وسلم, passed by a grave and said, These two are being punished and they are not being punished for something hard, but it is a great sin. One of them did not keep himself clean from his urine and the other went around spreading tales. Okay. Number 37. Showing off. So woe to those who pray, but who are heedless of their prayer, those who make show of their deeds. Mm-hmm. Number 38. Yeah, absolutely. Acquiring knowledge only for worldly gain or concealing knowledge. People have to understand as well what the point of those sins is. So what happens when you show off? Sure, you make other people jealous. But that's not the big deal. The big deal is essentially that you are getting further away from God because you are deifying your possessions, your objects. Wow, look at my car. How awesome. Look at my house. Look at this. Look at that. Like this, you're pointing away from God. This is why this is sinful. Those who conceal what we sent down of clear proofs and guidance after we made it clear for the people in the scripture, those are cursed by Allah and cursed by those who curse. He who is asked about knowledge he knows and does not reveal it will be sued with fire on the day of judgment. Number 39. Breaching trusts. O oh, you have believed, do not betray Allah and the Messenger or betray your trusts while you know the consequence. Number 40. Reminding people of one's kindness. O nice. oh, you who have believed, do not invalidate your charities with reminders or injury as does one who spends his wealth. Only to Nobody be seen by it. the people and does not believe in Allah on the last day. Nobody likes it. If you believe in God and you're giving charity for God, then God saw it anyways. You don't have to tell people that you gave charity. His example is like that of a large smooth stone upon which is dust and is hit by a downpour that leaves it bare. They are unable to keep anything of what they have earned. Beautiful. Number 41. Rebelling and calling people disbelievers. Oh. But do not transgress limits. For Allah does not love the transgressors. He who calls his brother a kafir, disbeliever, one of them will bear it. Really, man? 42. This is absolute news to me. Yet again, I learned something absolutely mind-blowing here. I heard this term being thrown around so often. People being convinced, he is kafir, he is kafir. I didn't know that this is one of the sins. Two. Oh, wow. Spying and eavesdropping on others' private conversation. O oh, you who have believed, Avoid much negative assumption. Indeed, some assumption is sin, and sure. do not spy or back by each other. Would one of you like to eat the flesh of his brother when dead? You right. would detest it and fear Allah. Indeed, Allah is accepting of repentance and merciful. Number 43. Spreading harmful tales. Namima. And do not obey every worthless, habitual swearer and scorner going about with malicious gossip, a preventer of good transgressing and sinful. Tailbearing, namima, is defined as spreading words among believers with the purpose of stirring up enmity and problems between them. This matter is forbidden. Number 44. Cursing others. Abusing a Muslim is evil and fighting him is disbelief. Mm -hmm. When a man curses a thing, this curse goes up towards paradise. The doors of paradise are shut against it. The curse then moves right and left. It finds no way for it. Then it goes back down to the cursed one, if he deserves it, or else to the curser. 45. Not fulfilling one's promises. Sure. Whoever possess any Common of sense. these characteristics has the characteristics of hypocrisy until he gives it up. Whenever he makes a promise, he breaks it up. Number 46. Believing in soothsayers and star signs. Mm. Whoever goes to fortune teller and asks him about something will not have his prayer accepted for 40 nights. He who asks a fortune teller or an astrologer something and believes him of what he says is a blasphemer. Makes perfect sense. Number Yet 47. Again, we have the same concept. A wife being rebellious to her husband. If a man invites his wife to bed and she refuses and he becomes angry on her, the angels curse her till morning. <laughs> Again, from a Christian background in the Bible, we find that women should obey their husband as the husband obeys the Lord. 48. Making statues and pictures. The people who will receive the greatest punishment on the day of judgment are those who compete with Allah in creation, those who make pictures or statues. It's about believing one can give life or compete. Interesting. 49. Striking oneself, wailing, tearing one's clothing, pulling one's hair, 
and similar deeds are a form of mourning. So this here is extremely fascinating as well. How would Shias explain this? Within Shiism, in some Shias, we see that they punish themselves with knives even, or similar forms of mourning, beating their chest. So please, if you're Shia, let me know in the comment section what you think about this verse. Hair and similar deeds are a form of mourning. Number 50. Committing injustice. The cause is only against the ones who wrong the people and tyrannize upon the earth without right. Those will have a painful punishment. Number 51. Being overbearing or taking advantage of the weak, slaves, wives, or animals. Number 52. Harming neighbors. A person whose neighbor, neighbor is not safe from his mischief will not enter paradise. Number 53. Harming and abusing believers and those who harm believing men and believing women for something other than what they have earned has certainly borne upon themselves a slander and manifest sin. Trailing one's garment in pride. Example. Below the ankles out of pride. What is below the ankles will be in the hellfire. This is if it's to do out of pride. What does that mean? So if you wear anything below the ankles, you will go to hellfire? Harming the friends of Allah. Whoever shows enmity to a slave of mine, Allah's, I shall be at war with him. Number 56. Men wearing silk and gold. Prophet Sallallahu said, Gold and silk have been permitted for the females of my nation and forbidden for its males. Men who wears silk in this world will have no portion of the heavens in the hereafter. He who wears silk on earth will never wear it in the hereafter. However, it is true that the Prophet, peace be upon him, permitted silk only for those suffering itching within four fingers measure, and he permitted using a tooth of gold also. Hmm. Number 57. A slave is running away from his master without reason. If the slave escapes his master, his prayer will not be accepted. You who believe fulfill all obligations. Number 58. Sacrificing animals for other than Allah and do not eat of that upon which the name of Allah has not been mentioned. For indeed, it is grave disobedience. The one who sacrifices for other than Allah is cursed by Allah. Number 59. Claiming that somebody is one's father while the claimant knows it is not true. One who claims that someone is his father and knows that it is not true will be forbidden of paradise. Obviously. Number 60. Arguing or quarreling for show and not seeking the truth. Whoever argues in support of something that is wrong and he knows it, Amazing. Allah will be angry with him Absolutely amazing because this reminds me of pretty much 99% of debates that we have nowadays online. This is why I stopped watching debates. This is why I stopped participating in debates because nowadays you see that people do not debate to find out truth. They simply debate to win a point, to win an argument. Absolutely disingenuous and boring, to be honest. Number 61. Not allowing excess water to flow to others. Say... Have you considered, if your water was to become sunken into the earth, then who could bring you flowing water? Whoever doesn't allow the access of water or pasture for others will not share in the blessings of Allah on the Day of Judgment. Number 62. Dealing in fraud. Woe to those who give less than due, who, when they take a measure from people, take in full. But if they give by measure or by weight to them, they cause loss. Number 63. Disbelieving fate. Then did they feel secure from the plan of Allah? A man asked, What is faith believing? The Prophet ﷺ said, Believe in Allah, His angels, His books, His prophets, and the day of judgment, resurrection after death, and fate, good or bad. Number 64. Eating carrion, blood, or pork meat. Mm. Say, I do not find within that which was revealed to me anything forbidden to one who would eat it unless it be a dead animal or blood spilled out or the flesh of swine, for indeed it is impure, or it to be that slaughtered in disobedience, dedicated to other than Allah. But whoever is forced by necessity, neither desiring it nor transgressing its limit, then indeed your Lord is forgiving and merciful. Amen. Number 65. Despairing from Allah's help or forgiveness. Say, O oh, my servants who have transgressed against themselves by sinning, do not despair of the mercy of Allah. 
Indeed, Allah forgives all sins. Indeed, it is He who is the forgiving, the merciful. Number 66. Continually not performing the Friday prayers and congregational prayers without any valid excuse. Prophet ﷺ said, If people don't stop abandoning the Friday prayers, Allah may seal their hearts and they will become heedless. Whoever hears the call to prayer and doesn't come to prayer, there is no prayer for him save for the one who has a valid excuse. It makes sense as well. Number 67. How do you want to Pre keep a religion going if you don't attend its houses? This is what is happening to Christianity. As you can see, people do not go to church any longer and like this, the religion collapses. Teaching error or establishing errors. He who preaches for error will bear his sin and all of those who follow him. The Prophet also said, He who preaches for error will bear his sin and of those who follow him with no decreasing for their sins. The Prophet also said, Every new established thing is an error in religion. Number 68. Being deceiving and plotting evil due to arrogance in the land and yeah. plotting of evil. But the evil plot does not encompass except its own people. Then do they await except the way of the former peoples? But you will never find in the way of Allah any change. Allah's pattern is never changing. And you will never find in the way of Allah any alteration. Yep. Number 69. Pointing a weapon at a Muslim brother. He who points a weapon at a Muslim brother will be cursed by the angels even if he was his brother in kinship. Number 70. Abusing or revealing any one of the companions of the Prophet Do not revile my companions for by the one in whose hands is my soul. Anybody? If you were to spend in charity a mountain of gold similar to Mount Uhud, it would not be equal to a handful or a half a handful or what they have done. These are the 70 major sins in Islam. Please share this video with your friends and family who may not be aware of these sins. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and keep us firm on the path that is pleasing to Him. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. I learned many new things here. Of course, as always, I do not know how legitimate those sources are. So please let me know in the comment section what you think. Are those authentic hadiths or not? Anyways, guys, the video is long enough as it is. I already proposed my questions to you. Please feel free to answer them in the comment section. If you like the video, leave the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And as always, if you want to support this channel, all the links are in the description box below. May God bless you all. Much love and peace.